welcome to my bird sanctuary where all the birds are going to gather together and I'm going to give you your part. This I know is a really participatory story so it'd be a little bit tricky but I'm going to count on you to say one word every once in a while and I'm going to point to you when I need you to say it. So here is the word. It's got four beautiful letters, each one of them important to the word. And the word is sing. So whenever I need you to say it, I'm going to go. And I'm going to say it too. So you shouldn't feel alone. So that's it. That's your entire job in telling the story. I think, yes. But if you want to make a puppet, this is all about birds and one other character, actually two. But I'll play the part of the wise woman. Thank you very much. And the king will be played by a tennis racket. I'd like to say it's a much used tennis racket, but truth told, this was not my forte, which means I wasn't really very good at it, but I couldn't uh, throw out the tennis racket. So I made it into a puppet. And what seemed appropriate, because you play tennis in a court, was that it become a king. So this is the king, and this is the court that he lives in. Here he is. And he's in a lot of my stories. So here is a very important piece of information out there. Please do not take a tennis racket that anyone uses, even yourself. You might find an old one, or you might just make up one. This just needs a head like that. Also, cool thing to make kings out of, forks, because they've got a throne a crown, excuse me, but they might have a throne too. I don't know that. So think about making a king to tell the story and the wise person should be you. All right. So I'm going to put the king down here. He's kind of fancy schmancy, don't you think? But a king with a crown that's a fork doesn't need to be fancy or you don't need him. But if you got a king around, think of the possibilities of storytelling. Now, the rest of the story Besides a little moving around, we're gonna walk back and forth from one side of the dark but not scary woods to the other. And you will notice the sun is up today in my studio. It's not outside, raining a lot in my city. So we need it, make the plants grow and everything pretty. So here's what my favorite thing to make a bird is out of two things. First one we've seen before, I'm gonna repeat it again because you never know how much you remember, me too. So this is an envelope. This is an empty envelope. And what we do is make it into a beak. That is a characteristic of every bird. If it doesn't have a beak, not a bird. So we're gonna put that inside. What does that do? It makes it stronger. And if you don't put it inside, not a big deal, but really I think you'll be happy if you do. Now, the simplest bird, of course, is this one. Yep, that one. And then I'm gonna put four up here, thumb down there, and then I'm gonna push and fold. Cut it. Four up here, thumb in the bottom. Can you see? I'll let you have a peek. I need to get some transparent envelopes and that would work better. So we're gonna push and fold. Thank you, would you let go? Nice. Now, easiest eyes ever in the world, of course, would be to take a marker and just put eyes, but I have this sheet of weird eyes. I call them weird eyes because they're weird and none of them are like the other, even the pairs they give you. So I am going to use this one here. And of course, these are stickers. Do you like stickers as much as me? I do really like them. One of the reasons I really like them is because you don't have to use glue. So here he is. And this is your characteristic weird bird. I'm going to put these away where they belong. And then I'm going to take out a sheet of these kinds of stickers. They use these for, um, I think, garage sales and something like that. And I'm going to take one off. Let go, please. Thank you. Put the rest away. Say, ah. And give him a tongue. There he goes. And this is a bird. I don't know what kind, but here's what's wonderful about birds. So many different kinds. What you're looking for? 
this way. Thank you. So many different kinds that you, it doesn't matter. You can um, give them a name. This is the lovely, weird-eyed, red-tongued bird. Right, you want to read the word aloud to everybody? Sing. Nice job. Do you hear that? Yep, sing. So you can practice that. If you don't happen to have an envelope, no big D, use your hand. You might have one of those with you today. Sing. Nice job. I'm going to put Mr. Singh down here. That's his name, the Singh bird. Now, I have in front of me, and you can't see, because I'm going to hold him up so you can, a collection of feather dusters, which come in so many different colors. Hello. And they are for dusting. Now, if you promise not to tell any, I think dusting is a big pain. Because what happens, and you need to, because otherwise you sneeze, what happens is the minute you dust, comes back. So, um, I make puppets, not dust, although I, I do have dust periodically, but I just dust it off. So, he, these are, and how many do I have? Hundreds. Why? I did a project in the school. I thought it would be fun to have them. The lovely people found them for me, and uh, I think I got them in the hardware store, maybe dollar store, whatever. So here they come. They've got everything a bird needs. They have feathers, and I think I was told these were made out of turkey feathers, and I think I was also told that the turkey was then used for something lovely. So they also shed their feathers. Now, what do you do with a, for a body? There's a couple of easy things. First, you could take a black marker. A Sharpie is the best because these are plastic. You can just draw a couple of eyes and that will be instantly a bird. And if you do that, here's your choice. He can be a bird with feathers up here or he could even be a bird with tail feathers. You could even fly along if you put the eyes on top, like that. He's kind of a long-nosed bird, so I don't usually do it that way. So here's one way to do it. Another way to do it, handy-dandy, ever-present collection of these paper towel rolls or toilet paper rolls. That's what they are. And you take your, oh, and you'll leave him as he is. What do you think? Pink, blue, or yellow? Hmm? Blue? Okay. Take one of these, just put it on like that. There he is. Again, he's got head feathers, head feathers, tail feathers. Now, if you want to get a little fancy, and don't we will always want to do that, Marilyn? That's me. What you do is you take a scissors, do this, kind of like, and make a tri two triangular cuts. So there they are. You can see them. I'm push it up a little closer to camera. Okay. And then pull it out. When you pull it out, there he is. It's got a little beak. And so, of course, we want to be able to see where he's flying or even see where he go gets his food. So we're going to do that. Now, for all of you out there that have any other markers, it would be great fun to take those markers color you so then you could have a bird of many colors so we're gonna did i say blue yeah okay so you can do that there he is that magical noise that's me whistling but uh, our bird who, who whistles for the puppet does the puppet whistle mm -mm. i do i want to say thank you thank you you're welcome. All right, these are the kinds you're gonna have now. I looked through my collection just to see what else I had of feather dusters and I found this one. That is magic. So one other choice of a bird body, harder to get and a little bit tricky and they're really better after they're used. So not so very long ago, I actually painted this room after it got all fixed. So I used a paint roller, but this one's a new one. Was I thinking about you, and I'm sorry I wasn't at the time, I would have kept it with all its paint colors on. It would have been so pretty. And then instead of using that roll, 
I could have used this very multicolored. You don't want to go in here. Yes, you do. Oh, I like that. Mm. So this is way too big, but it is nice and soft. And birds, because of their feathers, kind of nice and soft. So that's a couple of options. I'm gonna keep all the birds over here for our story. I brought one more along and um, he is called my red, white and bluebird. So he's, he's, he's a string puppet. I'm gonna show you the strings first. He only has four, but they allow him, well, hi, how are you doing? Good, you all excited? Mm-hmm, you gonna vote? You can't vote your bird, but people out in the world can vote, right? So I brought him along just to remind us. And uh, he is in our story too, because our cage is filled with beautiful birds. And uh, you, you can be in it, but you're a little big. No, 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 that's not bad. It's just you're too big for the screen. See the screen out there? See him? Do you see yourself? Look at that face. What a face, huh? Okay, you want to go back in your space? Okay, thank you for visiting. You want to wave to everyone? He only has four strings, and you know what they let him do? You want to sit for a minute on my hand? Birds don't sit, you know, but they can't take a bow. Take a bow. That would be called the red, white, and blue bow bird. Who knew? All right, buddy, I'm putting you right over here. Whatever you do, don't forget your line, and you know yours too. And your line is sing. And I'm going to point to you. Got it. Good job. All right. This kind of bird. This kind of bird. And at some point, I'm going to try, wish me luck, to hold up a whole bunch of these at the same time. And it's going to look something like this. Oh. I think I'm going to take you down here, buddy, because you're too big. But I'm going to be able to pick up these one after the other, maybe. So if you've got a bird, if you've got a hand, give yourself a hand. Get yourself ready. A bit of puppet. Knee bends here and all that stuff so we can get ready to do our show. All right. This is a once upon a time story. So we will start telling it together like this. Once upon a time, not so very long ago, there lived a very, very wise woman. And she lived on this side of the dark but not scary woods. And the reason she was wise was because she was always asking questions. She wanted to know who you were and where you went. She wanted to know how you took care of yourself. And if you needed anything, you just asked her and she would take care of you. Every time anyone needed anything, they went to her because she was kind and good and she lived over here. Now, on the other side of the dark but not scary lands, there lived a king. Good news, brand new king, learning new and great things. The king lived in the court with his entire family and the king in his court had great news because he, so brand new, wanted to help his people. Please greet the king. Thank you so much. Now, the king inherited many, many things. He inherited his beautiful kingdom and people who he wanted to help and please. He also inherited this most magnificent thing called an aviary, which is a very fancy word for birdcage and means the same thing. So the king's aviary was filled with beautiful birds. There were pink birds and flamingo birds, and there were yellow birds and shining yellow birds, and there were blue birds, and all of those birds were so beautiful, but none of those birds did ever sing. And he wanted his birds to sing, and he would do anything if only they would sing but they didn't sing. So he gathered together all of his people and he said, excuse me, but I want to hear my birds. And they said, oh, your majesty, I have an idea. Yes, if you want your birds to 
sing, then you need to feed them better food. Ooh, said the king, what a good idea. And so he asked what some of his people had for breakfast. Mm -mm. I had a blueberry banana muffin. Mmm. Did you make more than one? Oh, I made a huge batch. Well, could I borrow them? Oh, does that mean you're giving them back? No. Well, then you can have them, your majesty, of course. So the king took a big tray of those beautiful blueberry banana muffins, and he gave them to his birds, and they <coughs> eat them all up. But still, they did not sing. And he wanted to hear them sing. And the king said, hmm, now what do I do? I know, I'll ask someone else. Oh, hello, I'm someone else. What would you like, your majesty? I want to hear my birds sing. Well, let's see. Did you give them breakfast? Mm-hmm, good. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Look at them. They're, they're sitting awfully close together, your majesty. I think you need to move them apart. And so he did. He put the flamingo bird over there, and the pink bird there, and the yellow bird there, and still they did not sing. And he wanted to hear them sing. So then someone said, you know, Your Majesty, I think they might need a bigger bird cage." Mm. So the king had an aviarial architectural contest to see who could build a better birdcage for his royal majesty the king. Now this was already an extraordinary birdcage. It was gold and it had jewels in it, but the birds did not sing. So the king maybe thought someone would have a better idea. And you know, someone did. So he hired that person and that person built the most magnificent birdcage. It went all the way over there and all the way over there. It went five stories up five stories down, even at an elevator and valet parking. And still the birds did not sing. The king was quite upset. How could he make his birds sing? And then somebody, maybe it was you, had this great idea and said, you know, your majesty, I hear tell that over there on the other side of the dark but not scary woods lives a woman so wise that maybe, maybe you should go and ask for her advice. And so he did. The king summoned his royal horse <laughs> and off they went. Help me out with a little sound, please. <gasps> when the king had traveled across the dark but not scary woods, he got to the house that belonged to the wise woman and he knocked on the door. No, no, no. It's the king traveled all the way over from the court to see me. <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> excuse me, your majesty. <sighs> did you come to see me? I did. Oh, <laughs> how nice. And what can I do for you, your majesty? See, always asking questions. It's how we learn. <clears throat> I would like to hear my birds sing. Oh, they don't sing? No. Nope. Oh, well, your majesty. Could I see them? Well, of course. So the king and the wise woman traveled across the dark, but not scary woods together. When they got there, oh, the wise woman looked and saw that beautiful bird cage filled with all those birds, the pink bird and the yellow bird. Oh, and then the flamingo bird and the blue bird. She even saw lovebirds sitting in the corner. And then she saw toucans and parrots and any other kind of bird you can imagine, canaries, even crows and a raven and a dove so beautiful. It made her heart sing, but not the birds. And so she said, Your Majesty, I have a question or two for you. Mm -hmm. Of course. Did the birds sing for your father, the king? No. Did the birds sing for your grandfather? No. Did the birds sing for your greatest, greatest grandsisters of all? No. Hmm. 
So another question, did they live in a bird cage for your father? Yes. Did they live in a bird cage for your grandfather? Yes. Did they live in a bird cage for your greatest grandsisters of all? Why, well, yes. Well, the answer is simple. If you, your majesty, want your birds to sing, then you must set them free. <gasps> the king had never heard anything like that. The king had always known that his birds lived in a bird cage. They had never been out in the open air. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't do that. Why not? Because my father didn't, right? And my grandfather didn't. Again, right? And my, my greatest grandsisters of all didn't. So well, how could I? Oh, your majesty. This is very easy. If you want your birds to sing, then you must set them free. Again, I'll miss them. Perchance you will. Oh, the king, so distraught. The king walked back and forth for two days, three nights, and all he could do was think about what to do. If he set them free, he would never see them again. And then he had to do it. He said, I have to do that. Why though, I said to him, I, the wise woman said, you know, your majesty, it's not your job to do as your father, your grandfather, or your greatest grandsisters of all. You should do what is right for you and your people now. So the king, with a great deal of courage, walked to one of the many little doors in his aviary birdcage, and he opened it up. And then he stepped back to watch as that lovely little bluebird stepped to the edge of the cage and with a great deal of faith flew out. And as it flew, it began to sing. And then it was followed by the flamingo bird and the yellow bird and the pink bird and the amazing weird eyed white bird. And as they all flew, they all sang. The music was beautiful. But when the king looked inside of his cage, it was empty except for one lone feather. And the king began to cry and he said to the wise woman, look what you did. All my birds are gone. I'll never see them again. Oh, your majesty, what you did was right to set them free. But I'm gonna give you just a hint of what might happen. You see, birds are migratory. What does that mean? They fly away. And they come back. And sometimes when they come back, they bring with them a mate. And they stay in the same place where they were before. And even better, sometimes when they come back, they have this thing called the grandbaby bird. And those will be for you to love as well. For your majesty, what you did to set them free is what we need to do. I thank you, your majesty, for your courage, and I thank you for your singing, and I thank all of our birds for their songs. And now, as we say in tennis, I've been told, that's a love story. Fair match. Have a great week. A week filled with love, a week filled with kindness, and a week filled with you doing all the right things. Thanks for coming by. Bye-bye.